uh, how did that uh, that connection with uh, with uh, Hellcat uh, record started? I read somewhere uh, through the uh, 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 singing gutters. Yeah, well, they were yeah, they're friends of ours for a long time, and uh, bad bad bands. Uh, we, uh, we were friends with Swing Nuggets for a long time, and we did gigs together on Cal okay. Calif West Canada. Coast and East Coast, and uh, so you know, gave them some, uh, you know, gave them a cassette of, of the stuff that, that the band had done, and uh, you know, I guess they told they told uh, the guys from Rancid, hey, check this out, you know, it's, it's a cool, uh, you know, cool stuff, it's cool stuff from Boston, check it out, and then oh, no, we have a new label, maybe they uh, maybe they want to be on it. They put us on a compilation, give them the boot, and uh, and they say, hey, so uh, you want a record contract? Okay, cool. The rest is history. Yeah, and then they just blam out four records later, five records later. Are we out of time for the interview? Uh, what about uh, Warp Tools? Do you like the Warp Tools in general? Uh, because uh, I heard uh, many many bad things about uh, Warp Tools. Well, it start, I think what it started off as was a good idea because it started off as an alternative from from Wallapalooza and all these big festivals, you know? Oz, yeah, well, I think it was before Ozfest, I think, but uh, it started as an alternative to corporate festivals and then it sort of became that after, after this will be 10 years ago that it's been around. This, this, year, well, this year, 10 years. 10 years. I went to the first one and it was small and, uh, you know, sick of it all played and uh, it was fucking great and, uh, you know, a lot of other like small, you know, well, smaller bands in Sigma Gun played. They were one of the bigger bands that played. It was excellent. I think over the years it's become what it was against. Uh, corporate, just uh, corporate. Uh, okay. But this, I mean, I think the people who run it are actually really cool, and they 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 do for the bands. Rather, they 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 know which bands are are are, are doing work out there and touring and stuff. Like for instance. Uh, we did the Warp Tour a couple years ago, and the band uh, Sum 41 was on it, and they they had just had a big hit, the number one hit, and they were huge, but they still made them play on the side stage, you know, early mm -hmm. in the day, because they're a new band, and you know, they, they you know, there's band, bands like, you know, Bad Religion and these other bands who have been around for years, and they, they've been touring all, all the time, so they give those bands, the bands that deserve deserve the, 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 the spotlight, they give them the, the main stage. So I think, you know, I mean, the, the people... Last, are, last year on World, World Two, you were like headliners. Well, you and, and, and Rens. Well, the thing is, every band plays a different spot every day. You can play at 12 in, in the 12 noon, or you can play at 8 o'clock at night. It's different, you know, it's every day it's different, which is also good because, you know, because I, I think a lot of times, if kids knew what time, you're more down. So the bigger bands were playing, they would only they would come later on, but and they wouldn't be able to check out new bands. But now, you know, in fact, the Warp Tour, the schedule is released only that day. Kids come during, kids come in the morning, they see bands they wouldn't have never heard of before. And they wouldn't have checked out if they, you know, if they, if they, if they even had known they were playing. Stay off. Focus. <laughs> did I hear the anti-heroes? Well, did I hear of the anti-heroes? <laughs> I think go. I did. <laughs> Here we go. Uh oh, connection. <laughs> uh, uh, what current bands? Do, uh, what current bands do you like? Uh, Bloodline from Italy, very good. Superyard from London, BP, very good band. Uh, uh, Jin Rai from Japan. I like a lot of Japanese stuff. Jin Rai, uh, strong style. Um, Tommy and the Terrorists from Boston. Rattle Battle from Boston. They're like a rock and roll rose tattoo kind of. Thing. So how's the Boston scene like now? It's it's it, well, it was like incredible. Maybe maybe eight years ago, it was it was amazing. You know, you had bands like uh, the Trouble, the Ducky Boys, Showcase Showdown, um, All Systems Stop, Big Bad Boss, Rocket Murphy's Unseen. Uh, you had just a lot a lot of bands. There were big shows every weekend. You'd have a show just local band local bands and six seven hundred kids there. And that's pretty impressive. Um, now I think a lot of those old bands broke up, and I think a lot of the kids that were going to those shows now go to more uh, like bar, like gigs at bars and stuff like that. You know, it's a more of an older crowd now. So it's and everybody's split off into their own genre. You know, people are still going to the you know like spiky punk kids and boring this and garage that and you know 
off. So it's 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 maybe it's broken up a lot more, but it's it's still it's still vibrant. There's still a lot of good bands around in Boston. You know, the, the, the spits, the tamp offs, the uh, uh, I just, shitloads of bands in Boston. There, there always have been, but uh, the scene it's not as crazy as it was maybe eight years ago. What was your favorite band uh, uh, from Boston in, in the in the eighties? Eighties. Slapshot. I knew it was going to say that. <laughs> I, well, I mean, well, maybe because all, all these, all I mean, it was Jerry, Jerry's Kids, DYS, uh, SSD, the Negative control. Effects, um, Impact Unit. Uh, I mean, I love all the old Boston hardcore, the early stuff. Uh, I'm fucking I like, I like uh, uh, Stranglehold. Uh, Stranglehold? Yeah, Chris, Chris Doty from Gang Green was in that band. Gang really? Green, another fucking incredible band. Uh, from that era. The cool. Yeah. Even behind. even in the 80s, uh, there was uh, a lot. There were a lot, uh, a lot of rumors about <laughs> about uh, uh, right wing uh, bands from the, from Boston. Nah, they never were right wing bands in Boston. Not well, maybe one or two, but I, I don't. Uh, because of FUs and uh, my uh, my America. But album. that was a joke. See, they they were. All they they were and now again we drop kick Murphys. yeah yeah they're, they're all petrified there's the connection right. there's we, we the drop, connection we love, you know we love our country we love our city but the fu's i think we're taking the fact that so many punks are so sensitive about everything that they're they're making fun of them in, in like uh, so the pc punks yeah exactly it's the politically correct types they're like yeah fucking my america you know uh, you know but uh they were they were right wing i know a couple of those guys and they're they just, you know, regular regular guys, you know what I mean? They're at the hardcore. New York, I mean, you know, also, the same same with the rumors in New York, you know, like the old bands, like the Pro Mags and stuff, saying that, you know, they were right. Agnostic Front? Or, yeah. <laughs> All the rumors we heard about yeah, Agnostic about Front. <laughs> oh, we're going to ask Roger about that. We, we are. Well, they put them on a, they, over here, the reason why the, the rumor was big in Europe was because some, uh, I think a label from France put them on a set, on a record with this band, White Pride, who was oh, from, uh, was from uh, somewhere in the Midwest in the States, who was also, they were a joke band, but they never asked Agnostic Front permission for this, so there was this, this like, a split sentence with a band called White Pride, so what are people going to think, you know? That's, that's bullshit, I mean, the AF is, you know. Uh, you, you achieved almost uh, everything in, in, in punk rock and music. What else can you do? Any any higher goals? Higher drop goals? Kick Play with ACDC? Really? Oh, yeah. You all tend to um, um, tend to play with those heavy metal gods, gods of heavy metal, yeah, rock, and roll. Yeah. rock and roll gods. We're playing. Uh, one of our goals is going to be reached. Uh, we play Australia uh, in a couple of months. We're playing with Rose Tattoo. Rose, Rose Tattoo. Wow. wow. We're so. Excited. What about Motorhead? Motorhead. We, we, did, we did a tour with them. Really? In the United States. It's a terrible for us. Uh, because uh, people, because the motor had the rock star, uh, stars. No, no, they were nice guys, but the fans, the people that come to the gigs, they don't want to see an opening band. They want to see motor, and that's it. You know, so the opening bands are playing. And, who cares about Dropkick yeah, Murphys? Yeah, who, who, who the fuck do you get off? We want to see Motorhead, you know. And I can understand that. I mean, I go to see Motorhead. I'm 